Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jolie and today's demonstration is again in voice capture, my favorite topic. But this is a situation where the vendor invoice has come in and there is not a vendor in the system to match it to. So the, the um, invoice needs to be addressed by AP and I'm gonna walk you through what to do in those situations. Let's get started. As you can tell, I'm using the green screen, so it's um, super fun. Um, so we are going to jump into vendor invoice automation here. Now this is a workspace, out of the box workspace. The only thing that I've done is I um, embedded the invoice capture solution into this workspace. Uh, very easy, no coding, no technical. I'm not all that technical. <laughs> so it's real easy to do. There's some great videos um, from Dan with Crow. Um, if you've not read his blog or seen his videos, he's really good. Okay, so typically the invoices would just come here into captured invoices because you have the um, maybe a vendor box. So basically your vendors are sending all the invoices to an email box. Um, and then the automation in the background picks up those invoices and brings them here into captured invoices. We're manually going to do that um, here. If you do have a situation where you need to manually um, import some AP invoices, here's how, here's how you do it right here. Um, super easy. I just dragged and dropped and upload. You can do up to 20 at a time. And then it comes into received and Typically, users don't have to monitor this queue because the only thing so far that I've ran into that sits here um, as canceled is if you have a duplicate file, um, which is great because you don't want duplicates coming in. Um, it, it just wastes time. Uh, having users look at duplicate invoices is um, significantly a, a time, big time waster, right? So kudos to Microsoft for that. Um, but yeah, a few seconds. If we refresh this now, it's gone. Where did it go? It went under um, captured invoices. So if I refresh this, I'll see it here under captured. Now, the OCR and the AI builder couldn't identify any any matches that, that it, um, so it just sits here and captured until an AP um, clerk or um, user comes in and um, addresses it. So the first thing I notice is there's no legal entity. So I can go into the actual invoice here and from an AP perspective, and I'm going to collapse this to kind of give me more visibility on uh, my invoices here. Okay, so we can see that this invoice, based on looking at it, definitely a US01 legal entity. And I noticed that um, I couldn't get a vendor. Come here to errors. Oh, oh here. We don't have a vendor account associated with this. So what Microsoft has done in this workspace is given us this all vendors here. So if I wanted to, I could duplicate this tab, go into all vendors and quickly add this random vendor if that is the process. Um, for me, it's going to be that process. You might have to go through an approval. There might be document just depending on um, I'm just going to put random, depending on your company policy. But for me right now, for this demonstration, I'm just going to, now I do need to add a sales text group down here. I'm just going to grab a random sales text group. All right, so this vendor is now set up. Now well, the issue with, I don't say issue, the, the next step we need to do is we need to um, connect this new vendor into the invoice capture solution. And it's really simple to do, but someone who's managing your invoice capture would need to do that. I'm gonna walk you through how to do that today. All right, so while this saves, I'm going to open a new tab and we're gonna go into invoice capture. And we're gonna go into the actual uh, app, Power App. Um, so here's the app and we're gonna go into setup. And we are going to go into set up, set up system, manage vendors. Now here you can sync your vendors by legal entity or sync by selection. So if I want to look up 
my vendor. So let's see if I can filter by random. Oh, it didn't come in. Let's see. Then might not be saved yet. Yep, yeah, it's saved. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's just sync it by legal entity. Now you can see one of the vendors is, is coming in. That's the random one that we see here. Okay, so now if we go back into our um, invoice itself, now we can come in here and classify this invoice pretty easily. So now we know that the legal entity is US01. The lookup process, I just hit enter on my keyboard and it pulls up all the vendors here, but I could type in um, random. Oh. Oh, I think we have to do, let's try that. So it looks like we need some filtering. I like this, but we need a way to be able to search for a vendor without scrolling through all of them, right? That didn't work. Vendor name, A to Z. Yeah, so this is an area that I need to work on um, testing because it doesn't look like, I mean, we're not gonna be able to have a situation where our AP teams are scrolling through here. So Microsoft, I want to Yeah, we're gonna need to, I'll be back with you on that. <laughs> but for now, we're just going to go ahead and select random, save and close. And it, it, did, auto, it did automatically recognize that this is probably a cost invoice. It doesn't have a PO number on it, which is good. Um, that's kind of Microsoft's intuitive um, understanding here. I do need to start a review because I noticed that currency code is not filled out. We need to do that. Now what's neat is, is the next time this invoice comes in, the AI is going to remember that I picked USD on this invoice. So it's going to remember that next time I won't have to do it again. And then item number here. Oh, actually it's a repair. Repairs, here we go. And then we're going to derive and check. Complete review. We have no errors here. And then transfer invoice. Not bad. Now if we needed to, I should have waited and transferred, but now it's already going to pending vendor invoice. The automation's going to run. Love the automation. I'll show you how that works here. Um, if, in case you haven't been on, on any of my previous uh, videos. So now we have this. Now, your users are not going to, AP is not going to be monitoring the pending vendor invoices anymore, maybe once a day. What do I mean by that? Well, because as they come over to pending vendor invoice, everything else, excuse me, is going to be done for them. So um, updating match status. If it's a PO, it's going to, a PO invoice, it's going to try to match product receipts. Um, and it's going to submit to workflow. All of that will be done automatically. You, no one will have to do that. But for this demonstration, um, I wanted to show you how that's done. So I, we, don't, we don't really need match status here. So I wanna see if it would just submit to workflow. So how do we do that? Is there something over here called process automations? It's my favorite word. It's under setup. <laughs> I don't know why, but process automation sounds so awesome. Uh, okay, in the background process here, here's an automation, submit vendor invoices to workflow. I'm gonna edit it and make the time right now so that it processes through because I'm not going to stop this video. Let's see if we can capture that now. So I just made it for 155 and 39 seconds. So we'll see. Now, while that's waiting, I'm gonna tell you about my weekend. In approximately 30 minutes, I'm going to pick up my grandson. He is six years old. 
he already loves creating YouTube videos. <laughs> I have no influence on him. I promise it's just in his blood. He is creating dinosaur videos it's talking about these different dinosaurs and it is so neat. And he's never seen me create a YouTube video. It, it is so funny. Um, and what's funny is at the end of every video that he makes, cause I have recorded him, he'll say, thank you for watching. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, anyway, if you've ever seen Kid City, I think that's where he got it from. All right, so let's see, this did not run yet, but let's look at our process automations, my favorite word. Okay, so the automation ran, submit vendor invoices to workflow. Um, I think there's a match process on here. It might not let us, it might not run through, but it does take a few seconds. I was like 30 seconds to a minute for it to the process automation to run. Now, if you're sitting here waiting on it, it's gonna take time. But when you have this automation running every hour or every so many minutes, depending on what, what part of the process, your users will be working on other things as these will run through the automation. And the goal is fully automated. So it'll all run, it'll post the invoices because in the workflow, you can actually add um, a workflow configuration that will, at the end of all the approvals of the workflow, we'll post the vendor invoice for you. It's really nice. Um, Microsoft's vision is fully automated AP process and they're on it. So from the minute the vendor sends the invoice in, the um, invoice capture will receive, automati automatically receive the invoice, um, run it through OCR, um, AI, read it, capture it, um, as long as everything matches, it runs it into pending vendor invoice. The process automation uh, starts running um, periodically based on the, uh, the times, the time period. And then before you know it, um, the invoice is posted. But it looks like here that we have some match status to do. Um, for whatever reason, uh, the automations have not run for this match status yet. And I think it has to do that. I'm gonna show you how to push this through just so we can see it posted. So if I, if I was a user and I did wanna go ahead and manually um, update this to get it to post, maybe we need to pay it quickly. You can do that, just hit edit. And if you watch my other videos, I do run the automation. It's really neat how it works, but for this demonstration, I don't think it's necessary, but it is necessary to show you how to just untoggle it out of the automation process your users could review the invoice here real quickly, make sure it's posted correctly, it looks great. And um, they can update match status, passed. And that's probably the step, the automation I forgot to do, right? It needs to update the match status. And then um, submit to workflow. You guys got to hear my story about my grants. <laughs> And then this will auto post. So we're gonna see that. I'm gonna let it wait. What I, I can't remember what my workflow is set up for this. It might need my approval, but we'll see. So while we're here, let's talk a minute about workflow. Have you ever looked at workflow? And I'm just gonna go into the history. And have you ever been here and been like, what does all of this mean? If you're a new user, it's just too much sometimes, right? Why do I have four different tabs? I always tell people to collapse these down. Collapse these down because under the general tab, it's just general information about your workflow. You really don't need it. So leave it, leave it collapsed. Um, tracking details list and tracking details is the same exact thing, just listed differently. I like how Microsoft puts everything in a grid format. I'm an Excel lover, um, so it just reminds me of Excel. It's got the drop down columns to filter and so forth. Um, I should see some action. Ah, we got it. We got a accounting distribution. I'm going to show you how to fix that. Um, but I like this because if there's any comments, if it's returned, you can easily scroll to the bottom of this list and find out exactly where your workflow's at. Right now, we know exactly. I came exactly to the bottom of this list. 
Now, if I go to tracking details, it tells me the same thing, but a little bit differently. It's a little confusing to me sometimes, but just depends on how you like. Some people like to read it like this. Um, and then work items is just who it's assigned to. So, which it tells you here in the tracking details list. So here, little tip. All right, so let's go back into our pending vendor invoice. Uh, do we need to recall it? That's a good point. Let's try to go into it. So what it's saying is that it's missing some distribution. Yeah, it looks like I have to recall it. Don't you love when you're doing a demonstration and you get some errors? Today's demonstration was really just about having some fun. Okay, so see how it says distribute amounts. Somehow or another, our uh, procurement category coding for postings are not set up yet. So I'm just going to select um, a account here. Let me see if I can find one. Yeah, oh, business unit. We'll just stick with whatever's the number, the first one and finance, yeah. All right, so that's simple, right? It just didn't know where to post it to. Now we can update the match status if we need to again and submit to workflow. I don't think we needed to update the match status, but. All right, so this should process through, but let's go back into that workflow history. Now, remember how we collapsed everything down? Typically the system will remember, but let's, let's see if I just save it like this. I'm going to save the view. I want it to remember that I don't want the general tab expanded. Let's see if it'll do that. Most workflows in the whole entire system look the same, right? I mean, the workflow histories and the workflows for that matter. But if I come here to any history in the system, it looks the same. It's got the, the same tabs. Ah, uh, for some reason that general's always expanded. That's all right. The other two are collapsed. All right, dead air. <laughs> I'm not going to pause this video because I'm having too much fun. If you need to fast forward me, go ahead and do that. <laughs> I, my feelings are not hurt. I fast forward people all the time. <laughs> oh, did you see that? It disappeared. Where did it go? It posted. The workflow told it to post. This is exactly what we wanted. Now again, all of that the ledger posting, you, your postings have to be set up. If it was set up, it would automatically have posted if it updated the match, st match status and submitted to workflow to automatically post it. That process automations is so nice. So Microsoft did a really good job on that. But let's look at the invoice. So let's go into, we could do this a couple of different ways. I like that I can go back into my vendor invoice automation and everything I need is here. So Microsoft has done a really good job in putting the links here as well. This is all Microsoft out of the box. Everything I need for AP is all right here. Microsoft did that. I did not do that. That was all them. Good job, right? Invoice journal, open vendor invoices, all purchase orders, open prepayments, all vendor master record. Great job. Invoice journal, let's go in here. Here's my random invoice number four. I can quickly see a copy of it. If, you're not, if you, this is your first time seeing this, I think it looks so nice. Look at the attachments. The time it's ta it saves, um, here's the original invoice. Remember, I can preview, beautiful. But the time you're saving users by bringing in those attachments is huge, right? Um, and manually entering all the data from a vendor invoice, I think it's beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm gonna head to pick up my grandson here in a few minutes. Have a great weekend and I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.